2014 was quite the year for the Nintendo Wii U, and it seems like 2015 has got some great games coming up for that system as well, one of which will hopefully be the new Zelda. Peter, I see you rubbing your loins. Was I? What? Yeah. <laughs> In my mind, you Wishful are. thinking. <laughs> You're the. You're doing Should the. I, you're getting. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no. Get that Chris, Zelda rub. No. All right. Mm -mm. All right, Peter, yes. you're excited though. <laughs> yeah, a new Zelda game. Yeah. Huh? What's not to be excited about? Dude. Yeah. Open world Zelda. Yes. I mean, I didn't honestly <laughs> like the last Zelda game I played that I enjoyed was on the 3DS, right? Yeah. The uh, Spirit Tracks. Link Between Worlds. All oh, right, sorry. No. <laughs> GameSpot's, GameSpot's game, game of the, the year, year for yeah. 2013. <laughs> Indeed. Spirit Tracks. But. Like I played Skyward Sword and I, I got I felt burned right away. Really? It yeah. was like two hours of them treating Link like he is the most boneheaded subhuman <laughs> to ever walk the planet. Okay, yes, but I will stand up for that game only because once you get past that, it's a pretty great game. Sure, a lot of people enjoyed it. Sure, I couldn't get past it. It's you like couldn't? <laughs> hey. Hey, Peter, no, I remember know. this huge bird that you've been like life partners with your oh, entire yeah, existence? Yeah. How <laughs> could you forget about it? You're so sleepy. Like, oh. Well, the new Zelda um, is going to, I guess, be more of a, an open world affair, uh, which is kind of like Zelda has always had like an open world, like a large world to explore. Uh, maybe in Ish. a more traditional kind of, you know, old NES style We're talking about way. the first game, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's kind of like the hub world, and then the dungeons are like little yeah. spokes off of it. You but know, obviously like, the term open world now sort of means something else in like the, the modern video game language. Sure. Uh, so what type of stuff would you like guys like to see, Peter, first of all, like yeah. taken from other open world games as we see uh, today, like brought into the Zelda universe? Mm, I'm just going to avoid the whole thing from other games thing. Can I okay. do that? Yeah, Can go I do for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Zelda was sort of created out of uh, Shigeru Miyamoto's love of nature, right? Yeah. And that game has always kind of toyed with, you know, the you know the outdoors, right? Open world game, you know, with the Wii U, they're able to make this huge, expansive world. Things that, you know, in the real world, if you were to sort of deal with an environment that large, you would have to do things like camp at night. Hmm. You would probably have to forge for materials to make stuff. I mean. That's the kind of things that I would love to see injected into Zelda. I don't know that the main formula has to change. <clears throat> uh, I mean, it could, you could even adopt the same system from A Link Between Worlds, where you rent equipment, you know, mm. say, you know. But yeah, I would love to see, to see Link really sort of tied in with nature, and uh, maybe even something like a real-time day-night cycle to encourage players to, well, encourage devs to do something interesting mm. with that, you know, with multiple instances of the same world, but with, uh, you know, different things happening. But and. You know, yeah, like have Link maybe have to set up camp. Mm. Yeah. Well, the the uh, Zelda series has always had like a sort of an interesting relationship with the day-night cycle. Some games, some games have it. Some games didn't have it in like towns, for instance. Some did in the overworld. But then you look at something like Majora's Mask, which was a game that was right. almost defined by the fact that like nighttime was a was a constant threat. Yeah. Uh, what type of stuff would you like to see Zelda Universe do with like a, a regular day-night cycle, like stuff like we see in other games where you know maybe it's easier to attack a like a camp at a different time, or maybe sure. you can really, you Well, know. Final Fantasy XV is doing something where the enemies at night are stronger and different, you know, mm. I'd like to see something like that, where they, they can, you know, things that are sort of, you know, recoil in the daylight might, you know, come out of their little caves and, and actually pose a bigger threat to Link, um, but then maybe the rewards could be better as mm. well. But yeah, like, I think if you could do that and have Link sort of deal with, you know, like when you turn off the game, like, have Link set up camp, right? Or if it's during the daytime, have him go do some tasks, hmm. you know, while the sun's still out. Um, I don't know. I would just, I would just love to see some of that. And maybe if they could bring back some like, you know, boating or flying as oh, well. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like if Link, you know, he always has a relationship with Epona and um, uh, Skyward Sword. He had the bird. I mean, I don't see why you couldn't bring another bird into the equation, and why Link also couldn't hop on another boat like he did in Wind Waker. Hmm. Uh, Chris, you were talking before about uh, the sort of um, the relationship with Epona and how like other games have used horse riding and like transportation to good effect. Probably Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was thinking about okay, so what is what's kind of an open world? What what makes me want to stay in an open world? What's an open world that I've like just relished being in? Mm. The openness of it, not just kind of passing through. And Red Dead Redemption is a stellar example. I think. One of the reasons this harks back to what Peter is saying is about that connection with nature. Having, having moments where I'm just like riding along a hillside and like, I just want to stop and take in the view because mm. oh my god, this is beautiful. Or you know, like I see some birds off in the distance or something, and just like, just like have a moment that makes me feel connected. Makes me feel like exploration 
is a reward in and of itself just because of the, the design. Yeah. Uh, I do think that there are ways to use a horse that's that could be more creative and could sort of create those kind of emergent opportunities, you know, mm. not, you know, you know, a la Far Cry, where like some you run by and some people are just in a fight and yeah. uh, maybe you come help them out. Or, you know, in Red Dead, you have those two where you're like, a, a woman's out in the desert and you go help her and like, maybe you actually help her or maybe like three dudes pop out <laughs> from her busted cart and try to shoot you. Like, I think emergent stuff like that could be neat for the Zelda universe because They've always felt, you know, compared to like a Red Dead, I feel like Zelda places have always felt like towns are where people are. Right. And like maybe there's that one guy by that tree, but they, the, the open world doesn't quite feel as lived in by the residents of the world. And a lot of times yeah. it's like, oh, because there are monsters out there. That's the way they explain it. But I think that like having it be more lived in and having a little more uh, character like from the people you encounter in the yeah. open world could be really neat. One of the things that, uh, and my limited, my experience with Zelda is relatively limited, I think, especially in comparison to, to, to you, Peter. Yeah. But one of the things I always felt, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you hella limited Still my lines. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that I always find interesting about the Zelda games is that they are very focused on the protagonist and mm -hmm. the sort of thing that we see a lot of in open world games now is that often the world itself is the actual character and you're just kind of playing a part in it. I guess by definition of like his sort of I guess quest that it's always going to be about him, but I always feel like they feel, you know, not to detriment necessarily, but they feel like worlds that have been put out there so that Zelda, or sorry, so that Link can interact with them. Uh, I right. never get a real sense of place from a lot of these games, uh, and what I'd like to see is perhaps what you see in games like Skyrim or Fallout, where you kind of you run into almost inconsequential like color stories, like side quests that may end up benefiting you in terms of like equipment you have or like your your character or they might just be there as like options that give you sort of a better understanding um, of the world because the worlds in, in Zelda are always so lush and interesting and, and beautiful but I never feel like connected to them. Do you, just from your experience in playing other Zelda games, do you think that, that, that that's a fair assessment that like those games are kind of, that they don't have that much depth to them as like societies or places that people live in? Yeah, I can't really think of a game that's really like taken a deep dive into the culture mm. of the world of Hyrule. Um, maybe that's because it's it's already established in a way, and we know. But it but it, it does change. It does change. Um, I think that, like a good example from the trailer that they showed during E3 uh, was Link just sort of hanging out on the hill, mm. and uh, you see that sort of monster in the background, and then he kind of rides up to it, and they fight. Uh, it's not exactly what you're talking about, but I think it, it's a, that at least shows me that it's a living, breathing world that's out there. And when Link is sort of interacting with this, um, you know, this monster, it, it's sort of it's not like a guy who's sort of like placed between him and an objective. Yeah. You know, given the open world aspect of it, you're going to expect these sort of emergent experiences. But but hopefully that's indicative of maybe you know a high rule that's in. I mean, I'd love to see a Hyrule before it's all established, you know, mm. like as these villages are being set up, you know, as people are learning to live off the land maybe or, you know, and then build their society around that. Like, that'd be really cool. But yeah. Yeah, like a frontier kind of part of Hyrule. Yeah. Like you've got yeah. the core, you probably going to have a castle, right? But like the areas where people are like just sort of setting out sure. and like they just got wooden bunch of wooden sticks around their tents. Yeah, I mean, I dude, I'd like it without a castle, honestly. Mm. Like it'd be great to see something that is really kind of primitive in a sense. Excellent. That'd be interesting, yeah. Cool. I think that for me, like, one of, one of the other things that I think that places that Zelda could stand to grow is with NPCs. Mm. And is, you know, because you have the ones who you just, they're like kind of silly. They're just sitting around. You come up to them and they make a little joke. And then you have the ones that you, are a little more substantial. You like maybe do one quest for them. You gather the lady's chickens. Yeah. or uh, And then you have the ones that are recurring quests where you've got a weird octopus lady under a mountain that you keep bringing her babies back to. Uh, I feel like I feel like, you know, I want to have some more articulation in terms of the level of NPCs. So, like, give me someone who I talk to and, like, have a relationship with, and it mm. deepens. And when I come back, they say, it's great to see you again. When I come back the third time, they say, hey, man, how's it been going? I've, look, I've been really, ha like, having a tough time. And you get some more dialogue out of them. You get yeah. some more personality. Because Link is not exactly overflowing with personality. Yeah. You know, he's kind of a cipher for you, the player. So in order for there to be personality in the game, the world needs to have it, mm. the people need to have it. And then if you talk to those people enough, then eventually you get to have sex with them. 
like in Mass Effect. Yeah. One can hope. That's the future of all <laughs> video games eventually. That's a weird segue into my mention of the Gravedigger from Ocarina of Time. Not someone you'd want to have sex with necessarily, but <laughs> a good example of an NPC in a Zelda world that is that has some depth, you know, and you get to yeah. learn a little bit about him and, and actually feel something for him. Mm. Dompe. Excellent. Well, well I guess we'll find out later this year. Mm. Join me, Peter. Join me, Chris. Do it. Rub those lines. I mean, and I hope you're all really... rubbing your loins at home as well. Uh, the new Zelda game will be out on Wii U later this year. Uh, if you have any thoughts on what you think should be in the game, by all means, put them in the comments below or send us what you think on the Twitters.